So have you ever wondered what chord extensions were and how to play them on the bass? That's the most difficult thing to do, transition onto your instrument. But we're gonna be talking about that today. Let's go. Okay, so are you guys ready? We're basically gonna do a crash course on what chord extensions are. We're gonna talk about one chord and that is the dominant seven chord. As you guys can see, I was having a little bit of fun in the beginning playing a dominant seven groove. I was just playing a chord on top of that groove. So it's C dominant seven on top of that. So the first thing we have to realize is what the dominant seven consists of. So when I hear dominant seven, I think mixolydian immediately. So mixolydian scale, mixolydian mode, major scale, flat seven. Major scale, flat seven, you can play it in that position. You can play it second position, first position, fourth position, doesn't matter. So we're gonna be talking about the extension of the chord. So think of the extension of the scale the same exact way. Let's just break it down to its purest form. So extension of the scale. So dominant seven scale or mixolydian scale extended. So when we talk about chord extensions, we're basing it off of the chord tone. So one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. And there's other chord extensions as well, such as the six, but we'll go over that at a later date. I want you to focus on the one, three, five, seven. And if you think about it now, they're all odd numbers. Okay, so that's one way to memorize that easily. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 13. Very easy to memorize that. So those are the chord extensions we're going to be going over. So if you want to talk about chord extensions, obviously you can think about the scale. In the scale we have one, three, five, seven, flat seven. If we're thinking about the mixolydian scale, this can be based on any scale too. So one, three, five, flat seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Okay, so the way that I figured that out, I played a two octave major scale. I extended the scale, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's where those chord extensions come from. So all I'm doing is playing every other note. It's really as simple as that. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 13, okay? So those are chord extensions. If you wanna play them on the bass, it's a simple way to actually do that because we don't have that much room as a bass player playing the bass. We don't, we can't stack our notes like a keyboard player would. And we have to figure out different ways we can maneuver these chords, especially when we get up into the upper extensions. So hopefully you have an idea of how these scales are structured and the properties of each of them, such as the triad and the arpeggio, because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna play those simultaneously, all of the notes, to create that chord. So I won't spend too much time going over fingerings or positionings of these triads and arpeggios. So hopefully you have a basic knowledge of that. I'll be going pretty quick. So C, G, E, that's our triad. One, three, five, okay? The next we have an arpeggio. We're gonna add another chord tone on top of that. So we have one, three, five, and seven. So you can play all of these notes at the same time, but it ends up sounding really clunky with every single note played at the same time, especially because of the lower frequencies of the bass. So what I like to do is omit that fifth note. And you'll see this rule, you'll see this happen a lot with different instruments, uh, keyboard, uh, guitar. You'll see this five or the fifth note omitted a lot. So one, three, five, flat seven will end up being one, three, seven. Okay, and then now what we can do is we can play that octave, that third note an octave higher, the 10th, and still have the same quality of the chord. Sounds a little bit better to me, in my opinion. So that's the seven. Now we can play the nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Next, we have the 11, and we have to figure out what that is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, and that just happens to be the F. Okay, so the four is the same thing as the 11. If you guys would notice that already, subtract seven from 11, you get four. So the fourth note of the scale is your 11. And you just play that an octave higher. So what I like to do is, you don't have to do this, but just in relation to, you can play several different types of chords. Here's a, it's like a C7 sus chord here. You can play like an inversion here, like the, the one, the major six, and then the 11. Um, 
you can do that if you want, uh, you don't have to, but I'm just showing you the relationship between that interval and the root note, or I'm just switching up the notes in between. Okay, so you can do the same thing. All right, but that chord tone, so on top of that, if we were to build that, so we have dominant seven chord, right? With the nine, we can actually add all of those in there. With the nine, we can do... That's with the third added in there as well. So I have one, three, flat seven, nine, and with the five taken out. A little bit more tough to play, but it's doable. So one, seven, three, or one, three, seven, nine. So let's do 11. So you can play all of those notes at the same time. So you kind of have to omit. So that's what I'm talking about as far as trying to maneuver your way around the bass and playing them on the bass because we don't have a map. We don't, we can't stack those notes on top of each other, uh, especially if you're playing a four string. The more strings you have, you may be able to stack it a little bit more. But if you're playing a four string, you can kind of get away with that. So um, I'm just playing the one the flat seven and the four. It ends up sounding like a sus seven, uh, seven sus chord, a suspended chord. All right, now we have the 13. So if I want to add that, a great way to do that is play the dominant seven chord along with the 13 on the top. Okay, so I will play the dominant seven chord. This is just how I would do it. One, flat seven, and I'm playing the three technically here. And then I'll add that 13 on the top. Like I'll skip all of those other notes, uh, the nine uh, and the 11, and I'll play, I'll move those two notes up there, those extensions here. So same thing here, same thing here. And I'll play that 13 right there, boom. So the chord will sound like this all together. Very nice sounding chord, that's a C13, but it's a dominant seven inside of that chord. So the extension goes up and you use that dominant seven chord. So one, three, five, flat seven, nine, 11, 13. But that's just the way we have to play it on, on the bass. That's, what, that's one of the ways what we can manipulate that chord, but still have the essence of a 13 chord, okay? So all together, this is a triad. Dominant seven, nine, 11, 13. One more time up close. It's just a simple interval exercise. It goes something like this. So you're playing the root note along with each scale degree. So you're playing the dominant seven or the mixolydian scale, but every root note you're playing back and forth. So you have root note two, root note three, root note four, root note five, root note six, root note seven, root note eight, Okay, so you have doo -doo 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 -doo. so the mixolydian scale. Make sure you're using those chord tones and those qualities, and you'll sound something like this. I just want you to be able to hear it. Also, it's just a great stretching exercise, as you guys can see. Dang, every single time I forget to do this. If you guys are interested in enhancing your bass playing to the next level, or having personal feedback from me, or joining our live stream master classes every single week, and there's so much more, I'll let you guys read about that. It's in the description. The link is gonna be there, or somewhere here on the screen, you guys know what to do. Or if you haven't subscribed yet, gotta do that too. If you haven't subscribed and you've gotten any type of value out of this, I just want you guys to be able to be better bass players, better musicians in general. So whatever you decide to do, it's great with me. I love that you're getting something out of this. Uh, those of you who have joined or already subscribed, thank you for coming back. Welcome back. But anyway, make sure you know to come on out clean, clear, and precise, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.